we're going to tie up Jim's Shad Fry Wiggler. I developed this pattern specifically for some largemouth bass that I've been fishing for, um, but the panfish also seem to love it. So we're going to start out here with a 60-40 streamer stripper hook from Fully Mill and some 3 aught Danville waxed mono cord. Uh, you can use any thread, of course, and other streamer hooks are going to work for you. This is, these are just the choices that I made here. Um, that's too far forward on the hook. So the key here is that we want to leave enough space at the beginning, uh, be right behind the hook eye, so that when we get to the point of folding over some uh, foam, that we'll be able to um, angle it such that it dives properly. Tying in some spay blood quill uh, white marabou here. The spay blood quill type marabou is just longer and stringier, not as like big and fluffy as regular marabou, so I really like it for bait fish pattern tails like this. I wraps back there, and now I'm going to take my three millimeter white foam and I'm going to cut a piece off that is a little bit longer than the hook shank and about a little over half, maybe two thirds of this hook gap. So that's fairly wide, and the reason for it is that if you cut it too skinny and then you try to do that fold over and slip it over that hook eye, you'll wind up breaking the foam a lot of times. And it's the last step, so it really sucks to have that happen and you have to start over. So make sure you tie, you know, you, you cut that piece of uh, foam fairly wide where it's going to go over the, the hook eye. Taper it down to a nice V so that you have a small tie-in point and tie in just the, the V tip. And you're going to leave that flat there on top of the hook waiting for the end. Just kind of measure up really quick to make sure that I'm going to have room to slip it over. So now we're going to get some UV polar chenille and UV, UV pearl and um, just dub up the body, body a little bit with that. Um, so that we get a little bit of extra flash in that body. As I wrap it forward, I'm going to preen back the fibers, just not trap any facing forward. I try to go forward enough as it is. Tie that off and cut it. All right, again, we're leaving a nice space towards that hook eye because we want a nice shallow angle on that foam. So we're going to use some Misty Blue Steve Ferrars Flash Blend. Uh, this is cool stuff. It's really translucent and, and shiny. And this is just quite a few strands here. Um, and we're going to tie it in on both sides to right, kind of like down, down the lateral line of the fish to emulate that blue that you see in shad fry. Get a few securing wraps over that and then bring it over the top and down the other side. Get some wraps over that as well. And then I'm gonna pull it back and clip it off just a little longer than the marabou tail. All right, now we're going to take some hollow gray Flyfish Foods Bruiser Blend and um, we're going to pull out some and pull it out a number of times to even up all of the strands so that when we tie it in, we don't lose a whole bunch um, when we brush it out. I tie this in similar to how a baby fat minnow is tied in that I form a little um, kind of a wide base with my thread. Um, in which to fold over the other the other part of it. I get a nice, nice kind of curved over the top um, tie in so that it covers like a bait fish root ball. Now with the body of a bait fish. Now I'm going to do the same on the bottom for the belly of it. And we're going to use um, Bruiser Blend in white for the belly. 
gray back, white belly. So that's the same deal, I'm gonna pull some out and even up all the fibers, pulling it out a number of times like this. Once I'm satisfied that I'm not gonna lose a whole bunch when I brush it out, I'm gonna tie in using the same fold over type method. And you really, you do want to build up, you know, right here, because this thread base is what you're going to wind up seating your eyes on. The three-aught uh, monochord is, is one of the reasons that I chose that thread is that it builds bulk very quickly. Being such a large fly, the larger threads a good, good match. Okay, once I have that secured down, then I'm going to build a little bit more bulk on that head and throw a few whip finishes over it, just a, like three, three turn whip finishes. And I get lucky on my second whip finish. Watch this. <laughs> Oops. Pure luck. Get my stray fibers untrapped. Pull this back out. And then I'm going to clip off my time thread. So I'm going to take some flat nose pliers, like I learned from uh, Uncle Cheech, and in order to flatten down this head a bit so that the, um, the stick on eyes will seat better on it. Nice flat surface to stick those to. And I'm using 730 seconds. Um, inch uh, holographic. I like the super pearl eyes because they um, are kind of translucent. And I'm going to take some solars thin and my bodkin and I'm going to get a dab um, in between the eyes and harden that up to fix them in place. My light. I'm going to do the same on the bottom. Let it soak in there, hit it with my light. And again on the top, just kind of building some layers of this stuff until the, the eyes seem really well seated and kind of rounded. And again on the bottom. Now I'm going to take my um, my UV fly finish from Loon, their Flow product, which flows really quickly and smoothly, and remove it removes the tack. So that Solars is going to be kind of tacky. Put a little bit of flow on top of it, harden that up, and it'll be a nice shiny, tack-free finish. So we're getting down towards the last step here. We're going to take that foam and we're going to fold it over the front. Sweeping back all the fibers to make sure that we don't trap any forward. And we're going to kind of eyeball it and figure out where we want to poke the hole in the foam. And it needs to be a little behind the eye of the hook because we're going to stretch it forward in order to um, get it over the eye of the hook. I'm going to heat up my bodkin. The hot bodkin will make a nice, you know, good size um, hole in the foam for you. Um, just going to help you get it over that hook eye. So I poke the hole right behind the hook eye. I kind of twist it around a couple times to make sure that the hole is fairly good size, not too big. And then I'm going to slap a little bit of super glue on the hook right behind the eye so that that foam will adhere once I stretch it over. It's not going to twist on me and do that kind of funky stuff while I'm fishing it or casting it. You got to be careful here so you don't break the foam. I think I mentioned that really sucks when that happens. So get that over the top. Make sure it's nice and, and even in terms of um, 
you're not being twisted to one side or the other, or you'll get some sideways swimming motion, and you don't want that. You want it to dive and wiggle. I'll do a little bit of trimming on the foam while it's still on the vise, but I leave it a fairly good size like that, and then it gives me some margin to be able to trim a little bit more when I'm on the water. If it's not swimming just right, and it's like, you know, pulling to the left too much, then I'll trim a little bit on the right, that kind of thing. I'll just do a couple little a couple little clipper type things while I'm on the on the water to make adjustments to how it swims until it is really an enticing, wiggly, divey little dying bait fish. Okay, there we go. So, show you a front view of this guy. See how that is going to dive. It will wiggle. And uh, we're going to hit it with a couple of markers. So, I'm going to use a Prismacolor red marker to uh, mark up flared gills, like a escaping bait fish. For some reason, they flare their gills when they're in danger. Good bit of gill flare there. And then we're going to take a black Prismacolor pen and we're going to use the broad end on the pen to mark on a couple of um, black spots that are on your shad fry. If you look at them, they've got a black spot that's just up behind their gill plate. So we're going to mark that on, on both sides of them as well. And there we go. That is Jim's Shad Fry Wiggler. Tie this in other color combos too. I'll bet it works for trout and, and a lot of other species depending on what the bait fish are that are around. If you liked this video, be sure to hit like and subscribe. I do have a number of videos and I'll be doing more. Tight lines.